hi everyone so this is my uh, first video for YouTube and uh, I'm just gonna start by introducing myself so I started playing uh, No Limit Hold'em about seven years ago and currently I play both No Limit Hold'em and PLO uh, currently I prefer to stay anonymous with regards to my real name and my online screen name uh, mostly because I'm afraid that I won't get action online and I don't want uh, anyone to have reads on my game um, personally I'm not really a very tech savvy kind of guy but I do use some software for my poker learning and some uh, game review. I mostly use Pure Solver for No Limit Hold'em and uh, Monka Solver for uh, Port Limit Omaha. Recently, I started uh, doing some study with uh, Poker Snowy, the GTO software, and I found that it's pretty, uh, it's pretty relevant still, uh, although some people have been counting it out, and. Uh, I don't really use much PT4 because of how I play on untracked sites, uh, but I'll get into that uh, just a little bit later. Uh, so I know most poker players are suckers for graphs, so this is my 1-2 graph, most mostly playing uh, No Limit Hold'em on GG Network. So uh, This was about 2 years ago, just before I moved over to playing Port Limit Omaha and after I uh, decided to quit playing Spin and Goals. And this is my results for PL24 and PL510. Uh, both of them are before rig. Uh, now that we are done with the introduction, I'll move on to talk about the topic for today, which is preflop. Uh, I think preflop is really important because how you play preflop uh, really affects how your postflop game plan is going to be. And so today I'll just be sharing uh, three tips with you guys. The first one, which is the most common one, is to basically not limp preflop and instead you should be raising other people who limp in front of you preflop. And the reason is actually really simple. Limping preflop is quite unbalanced uh, in terms of GTO uh, and it's really easy to exploit because when you limp, uh, most players who limp they don't have strong hands in their range, uh, like aces, kings, ace, king off, ace, king suited, ace, queen. So it makes it very clear to the people who are acting after us that we don't have a strong hand. And they can easily push us off our hand by showing some aggression preflop pre or just pushing off, pushing us off our hand postflop by triple bar barreling or like double barreling bots that are not really advantageous for us like ace high flops or king high flops and because of that when you see other players who limp in front of you you should be raising their limbs um, because they have a range advantage like how uh, we have a range advantage like how I discussed uh, before and also you are in position post flop uh, with a deep stack the next tip I would have is to stop playing all your suited connectors preflop Many players in the past used to argue that calling or flatting preflop is right because of how they lose a small amount if they flop nothing and win a, win a big pot if they flop a sh big straight or flush draw. However, the preflop aggressor tends to make better straights and flushes because they have stronger hands preflop. An example would be flopping queen jack 10 giving us a straight with 8-9 but also giving the opponent a straight with ace king. Um, even flopping mediocre pairs can be costly when your opponent flops a better pair. So this is also actually supported by GTO software Bunker Solver. For example, you can see how calling preflop is not actually a strategy that is recommended uh, when you're in a cutoff facing a race from middle position. Instead, your suited connectors probably do better as re-raises preflop. Uh, as you can see, they recommend uh, re-raising jack-10 suited and queen-10 suited and king-10 suited instead of uh, calling any hands. My last tip is to stop defending too wide in the big blind. A lot of players feel like they have already committed money and therefore have the right pot odds to defend against a race. This is actually not true. Most of our hands uh, actually still do not qualify as a defend because they don't do well against our opponent's raising range and we are also out of position post flop. Uh, one example would be Jack 8, uh, Jack 8 off. Uh, I used to defend this all the time, sitting the big blind against the button, but I've been proven wrong by Yamanka Solver, as you can see here, Jack it off is not a defend. Uh, instead of giving up on these hands, uh, some of them are actually uh, some of them are actually really good re-raise candidates as bluff. Uh, we can't only have 
strong value hands like aces in our range. So an example of a hand like that would be something like 9-6 suited and 10-7 uh, suited where they are better as re-raises instead of uh, defense sometimes. So most micro stake grinders who are just starting out would feel that software like Monka Solver or Pio Solver are really expensive if they were to take money out of their poker bankroll. So I'm going to put up some charts right here for players who are curious about what Monka thinks qualifies for a preflop race. So you can pause the video at uh, any time and take them down. So as for the small blind strategy, uh, limping and raising strategy can be really hard to execute for beginners, although uh, this has proven to be really plus EV. Um, this strategy is also not really recommended when you're playing somewhere that has high rig. You would prefer to raise and take the pot down pre-flop, so I recommend playing a raise only strategy instead, uh, like this one. Okay guys, so uh, that's the end for today's video. Uh, thanks so much for supporting my first video. And uh, if you guys have any questions or any hands that are really interesting, you can just uh, send it to my email uh, in my channel description. Thank you.